What's up, everybody? My name is Parasite. Welcome back to the Tactic Tester, Bayer Leverkusen. I said we'd play quite a few games and come back. We played a decent number of games, but we're back a little bit earlier than I thought we would be because, well, things are going well. And I wanted to come back before they just nosedive completely and things go right back to where they were. But since things are going well, I wanted to come back, show you what I've changed. I think I've fixed it. I think I've created a tactic that can score goals and still defend. But obviously, we're yet to see. We're probably going to lose both games this, this episode, and everything's going to go back down in, into the garbage. But for right now, it's working. We look since we last left you. We have not lost a game. We last played with you, Schalke, last, or Leicester Schalke. Played Wolfsburger in the Europa League. Beat them 3-2. It wasn't the most convincing victory. Only a one-goal win. Daily Sinkroven, actually, with the goal, which is the surprise of the century. A known goal and a 10 Yedvai goal get us the win. We then played really well against Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim going decent in the league. Beat them 4-0. Schick, Bellarabi, Ta, and Tapsoba with the goals. Four goals, or three goals in the first half. One goal in the 53rd minute. We just looked really good offensively. We didn't create quite as much in the next game against Cologne. We only won 1-1. But it was a very even game. Like, before we'd been getting, at, like, against Schalke, we got absolutely dominated. We actually played an even game with Cologne, who were doing pretty well in the league. They were above us in the league at the time. So, played decently well against them. Got a 1-1 draw. We then had the result of the series so far. We beat Bayern Munich 2-1 at home. Schick and Demirbay with the goals. Demirbay with a great goal to get the winner. Alton Edward with the goal for Bayern Munich. They were the better team. We FM'd them a little bit. Like, they had the better stats. Better, better shots. Shots on target. Uh, better dex G. But, we were clinical. Dimirbai with a great goal to give us the win, and I don't care how I get it as long as I get the win. We then played really well again against Wolfsburg, another 4-0. So, 8 goals, 8, what, 8, 9, 10, 11 goals through 4 games? in Or, four, seven game, 7 goals through 3 games in the Bundesliga is a definite improvement for where we last were. And obviously another 4 games in the Pokal. Bender taps over with a penalty, Yedvai and Musa Diaby with the goals. We, I think we figured it out. I think I figured it out. I am not going to get too ahead of myself, but five games without a loss is much better than what we've been doing. Our form's been very up and down so far. We had, I guess we had a good run in here, but still two losses in the Bundesliga in a row. Only one Bundesliga win. In the Bundesliga, we're doing better. Two wins and a draw in our last three in the Bundesliga. One of them a 4-0. A 4-0 in the cup against a Bundesliga caliber team. A Bundesliga team. So, we've got Eintracht Frankfurt and Werder Bremen in this episode. It's going to be interesting. The changes I've made, if you want to see them, here they are. I have switched the mentality to attacking. I just wanted everyone to kind of flick on to a, just a little bit more attacking mentality. I wanted our wingers to get a little bit further forward, a little bit more aggressive in getting towards goal. I wanted our attacking midfielder to be a little bit more aggressive in front of goal. I want our wingbacks to be more aggressive getting up and into the box, and that is exactly what's happened. The wingbacks have been so much better since I've made this change. And it's not the only change I made going to attacking. I've made uh, three other changes, but the wingbacks have gotten way better going forward. They're getting involved so much more. The other changes I've made is I've moved the passing directness and the tempo to slightly shorter and slightly lower. Just pass it shorter and give more time for the wingbacks to get forward. You know, we're not rushing anything. We're taking our time, waiting for players to get in position, and then passing it around near the edge of the box, working the ball into the box, which we already had on, but we're able, I think we're able to do it even better with the lower tempo. Like, we're working the ball better, finding the key passes in the box to get the clear-cut chances, and it's just looked so much better in front of goal. Then the last change I made was to be more disciplined. I just wanted them to listen to the instructions I told them to. I didn't, I didn't want them to have a whole lot of creative freedom. I felt like this is really what I want them to do. I want them to focus on the overlaps, focus on getting the wingers in the, into the play, focus on playing a lower tempo, giving our time for our wingbacks to get forward. I didn't want them just trying a whole lot of just risk it balls, trying to break through the defense when nothing's on. I wanted them to get the ball to the edge of the box, and then we can try to be a little bit more aggressive. But I didn't want to give it away so much in the midfield, trying for these aggressive through balls that just aren't never are never going to come off so thought be more disciplined was a good idea and all in all it seems to have worked things have looked pretty good 
We've even had a few injuries. Taw's been injured, so we've been without our best center back, and we've been getting a couple clean sheets. So we, Bender was injured too for a while, so we were without both of them for a little bit. So we were kind of all hands on deck at center back because we don't have a whole lot of center backs in this team. Fosu Minza had to play a little bit. Dragovich had to play a little bit. Tapsoba's is currently suspended, so yeah. We've got a couple injuries or a couple risk, you know, problems at center back, but we've been able to get good performances nonetheless. Tin Yedvai has been playing very well, which is very important. Lars Binder has been great at right inverted wing back. That's a, I think that's a huge change, too, that has changed things, is putting him in an inverted wing back instead of uh, Vindel, because Vindel's just been awful. Binder's been much better. Uh, Baumgartlinger is now the defensive midfielder, along with Aaron Geese. So I think he's been fine. Eros has been okay. The front four have been pretty good. Baye hasn't done a whole lot, but Dimmerby has been absolutely fantastic. If we look at his last five matches, Dimmerby has played a 7.74. He's been superb, the best player on the team. He's, there, he's our key player. He finally got a goal. He's been getting a fair couple number of assists. Schick is still getting a goal every now and then. I'm still... Not totally sold with what we got at striker. I'm going to be looking in this transfer window to get another striker because Alario wants to leave. He's transfer listed by request because he sucks. He thinks he should be starting more games when he's playing a 6.38. Uh, no, you are an awful player. I'm not going to give you any game time. So I'm going to sell him. Hopefully I can get close to his value. He's valued at 18 million. If I can get close to that, I can get a much better player in possibly just on loan that could really improve this team going forward. I, I don't think anyone I could bring in would be the starter over Schick, but they'd be a much better option off the bench when Schick needs a rest or when Schick's not playing well. Like right now, our best argent, option is Josh Sargent, and that's not a great option. He's not very good right now. He's decent, but he's like probably a Bundesliga 2 caliber player. So we need something better. Hopefully we'll be getting that. But for this game, we're going to stick with what we've got. This is the squad we're going with going into this game against the Eintracht Frankfurt. It is an away game, so it'll be interesting. I, uh, I'm i not sure. I changed things up a little bit when I faced Bayern Munich. I went to cautious, and I went a little bit more direct. I stick with the discipline. I stick with, stuck with all that, but I just changed it a little bit against Bayern Munich because I knew we wouldn't be able to you know, dom dominate the possession against Bayern. I'm going to start with this, I think. If it's not going well, I'll immediately change it to what I did against Bayern Munich. See if that'll help, but let's start with this. Let's get into the match, see if we can get some good results, see if we can keep our form into this game, and hopefully nothing you know, completely blows up in my face. I'm going to tell them I want them to pick it up where they left off last time. A lot of happy faces. Let's give the rest a team talk, saying that there's a lot. I have faith in you. There's a lot more to come from you. Edmund Tapsoba is injured. How big of an absence will he be today? Uh... These things happen, and so it's up to the squad to make sure we don't miss him too much. Luckily, we've got our other two center backs back. Eintracht Frankfurt's recent struggles have them in 16th in the Bundesliga form table. Is this a chance to pile on the misery? Only a fool would disregard their ability in favor of form. They're a good team who are likely to be dangerous in trying to arrest this slide. It's a good thing they're in bad form. Like That's, that's good for us, because I was worried going into this game, seeing where they're at in the table. They're just behind us in the table. Two spots behind us, Dorman in sixth, we're in, or they're in seventh, we're in fifth. So we're getting very close to those Champions League spots. I don't know if we're going to make it as Bayi gets injured. That's not ideal. I don't know if we're going to make it up to second. It's, I think it's a little bit of an ask for us to get all the way back up to second. I don't know. We only have half a season left, pretty much. So we have to be very good this second half of the season. And some other teams, especially Augsburg, who are just flying at the moment, need to cool off a bit. As we're nearly go behind in the 23rd minute, a nice ball towards the back post, and the keeper, the striker, hits the crossbar. Keeper gets lucky, but I'll take luck over skill every day. As Schick is injured. That is awful. That is the worst thing that, well, second worst thing that could have happened. The worst thing would be Dimmer by getting injured. Second worst thing is Schick getting injured, because Sargent is not a great replacement. I've brought him on to be, you know, in case of an emergency break, in case of an emergency kind of signing, but he's going to have to start because Alario is an absolutely tragic player, and literally, Sargent cannot be worse. I don't think it's physically possible for a player to be worse than Lucas Alario. So Sargent gets the nod. We're going to have to find goals from other places because I don't think we're going to be getting many from Sargent. Our wingers really need to get involved in this game. 
as we're going to be able to clear that one just barely. Sarge is going to pick it up. Uh, they've got a lot of men back, and Sarge is going to get tackled. He's not going to get to the second ball either, so I think it's probably going to be highlight over here pretty soon. Unless it's going to be a highlight for them, which they find Chuck for a ball over the top, but Todd with a great interception. As maybe it's a highlight for us. What a weird highlight. Bellarabi with the ball down the right hand side cuts in, cuts across goal, puts a shot on target, but trapped with the easy save. Left foot is not great for Kareem Bellarabi as he hits it directly at the goalkeeper. Bayern Munich are up 2 0 against Mines, so yeah, they're not slowing down anytime soon. It's been an even game. Neither team has really created anything. I'm going to say I'm not happy. Ta is under upset. I don't care. I do care, but you weren't that bad, but I believe in you. I don't know why he's demotivated from saying I'm not happy. You're drawing with a team that's right up there with you. You should be beating. should be, I mean, at least doing something. We've not created anything this game. Defensively, we've been solid, but offensively, we've been absolute shambles. And it's not going to get any better with Schick out. As Toure has a chance here to put a ball across. It's going to get blocked. Dimmerby is going to get it away into Bellarabi. Looked for a counterattack. Got men streaming forward, but I don't think Bellarabi is going to get away from his defender. Kostic, may, Kostic makes a great slide tackle. That's going to be the end of that. Kostic not a natural wing back. He's more of a winger. So a little bit out of his element. As I just realized I forgot to put our wingers to marking their midfielders. It hasn't hurt us so far, but I probably should do that. Let's, I don't remember. What's exactly? Are they playing a 5-3-2, I think it is? So, a Sergeant has a chance, and Josh Sargent scores a goal. I didn't have a whole lot of faith in the man, but he's proven me wrong. He's got a goal. And I'm going to tell my wingers, let's see what they're looking like. Yeah, they've got two in the midfield and one attacking midfielder, so they're not really overloading us too much in the midfield. We've got a defensive midfielder for this attacking midfielder. Our attacking midfielder can come back and kind of mark these two guys, but I still think I want our wingers because they don't only have two players down the wings. Our wingers should still be still be definitely marking their their midfielders. So right side gets Barcock, left side gets Sal. You mark Barcock. You mark Sal. As I might need to take Baye off. I'm going to take him off because I don't want to risk him for the future. Uh, Diaby's going to come on. Do I have to change that instruction now? I think it changes. It stays with the position, right? I'll double check. A nice play by Demirbaye to put the ball through to Sargent. Play a little one-two. Find a nice through ball. And Sargent in the bottom right corner. A good finish. Let's check the opposition instruction or the player instructions now just to make sure it stayed. Mark Sific. Uh, Mark specific player is still on, so we're good. Hopefully that means we'll be even better defensively because we looked pretty good this first half. We, they didn't create a whole lot, and now we've got our, our wingers marking their midfielders, so that should help with the overload in the midfield. And they shouldn't be able to really overload us down the wings because they only have one wing back on each side. So really this formation plays right into our hands. We should be good against what they're putting out there. Arias into Diaby, back to Arias, into Sargent, and he puts it just wide. Sargent was close to getting his second of the game, proving me wrong, but not quite. We go into the Champions League spots now from looking outside of Europe looking in to a Champions League spot in just a few games. Our turnaround has been fantastic. Now we just need to keep it going into the next couple games we've got. We've had some hard games coming up. Next game is not going to be much easier. They're in the top 10 as well. Then we've got Dortmund coming up pretty soon. They're right behind us. So he tries to fall find a ball across the area. But look how good our wingbacks are getting into the box. Like, that's offside. But Bender in the box. Arias in the box looking to get on the end of crosses. This patient passing play is working so much better than what I was doing before. Our gung-ho, you know, fast, high tempo, you know, just forcing the issue kind of a game. That's how I like to play. But it just doesn't work with this tactic. With inverted wingbacks like they are, we needed to give them time to get up at the pitch. So this change has seemed to make all the difference. It's not been a super impressive game so far, but we've had a much better second half. Bellarabi's tired. He can come off for... Uh, I'm going to put 
visor on there for now. Just a little bit more defensive. He can play right wing just fine. Actually, no, he needs to play wing back, doesn't he? Arias is tired and on a yellow and not playing well. I'll put visor at wing back. I'll bring on Amiri at right wing. Bender is playing decently well. I want to keep him in. Um, fullback or center backs are not playing that well, but I don't like changing out center backs, and Dragovic is not very good. Baumgart is going to stay on just because he's our more defensive option. I don't want to bring on an attacking player right now. I don't think that's a good idea. Let's con just continue with those changes. Let's take it off attacking, put it on balanced, start wasting time, tell the team to focus. Uh, Demir Bai is going to come off. He's on a yellow, and he's tired. Florian Verts can come in. Let's do some time wasting subs. One more. Bender can. Oh, no, that's all the subs I got. So we'll have to see that see out the game. It looks like we're going to an away win against Eintracht Frankfurt. They did nothing offensively, really. One shot on target. We didn't do a whole lot more, but we looked to be the better team. We had a lot of yellow cards this game. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with yellow cards. I just don't like red cards. Yellow cards are perfectly fine to me. Well done. So that was a good win for us. The referee had a lot of work today with your team picking up several yellow, several cards. Does that evident aggression worry you? It shows they got stuck in, which is fine by me. That's what I want them to do. I want them to get stuck in. I want them to be the more physical team. And if they get yellows, that's just how it happens. Schick out three weeks with an injury. Twisted ankle. That's not ideal. Baye out four to six days. So he's going to miss. Well, he might be back for Werder Bremen. He's going to be just on the edge. He might not be fully fit for the Werder Bremen match. But he'll be back for the Dortmund match, which is what's important. But I think we're going to have to quickly go in for that striker. Because I'm gonna, I was trying to not offer out Ilaria. I was gonna wait for other teams to come in because there's a lot of teams interested, some big teams too with some big money. But I wanted them to come in because I didn't want to be the one offering him out for, you know, half price. Like a lot of times, if you offer them out, they will ask for half price. If they off come to you for an offer, they'll pay over his value. So I wanted them to come to me, but I need to force the issue now. I'm just gonna offer him out, see if I get any interest. Because I need to bring in another striker, and we can't do that unless we sell Lario. As it looks like we do have some interest. Offers made, 12 and a half, 17, 17. Money over time doesn't, doesn't help me at all. So 4.3 million up front, and 13 million in installments. I'm absolutely not doing that. 12 from, oh, they'll, they'll negotiate too, so let's go to 21 and a half. Suggest so that. They go back to 13. Let's go to 20. They go to 14 and 1 million in installments. I don't want to do installments. Let's do his value. 18.25. 16.5. That might be the best I get. Oftentimes, they, they were willing to discuss, but they start at 8 million. 18. And then, no. Way under value. Villarreal starting at 12.25. Selling team wage contribution. I'm not totally worried about that. It's not a whole lot, so. Start them at 20. Put it at his value, 18.25. They go 14. No. Teams are not very good at negotiating in this game, and, and they're not locking in 4.3 million up front. So I guess he's going to Zenit. No salary wage contribution, 15 million up front. That should be enough for us to get in another striker. Probably just on loan, but I'll take it. Leon Pesh, is he any good? He's okay. I don't want to sell him. No reason selling players that I don't need to sell. Livikovic showing, Livikovic showing pleasing progress. So that's great to see. All right, I'll see you when we get to the Bremen match. Hopefully it'll be another good result like this last one was. And we are back for the Bremen match. Olario still hasn't been sold yet, so I haven't brought in my new striker. I can't make an offer until he goes because I don't have the money to sign anyone, even on a loan. I have negative money in terms of wage budget. So I really need Olario to leave. But for right now, we're going to have to start Sargent because uh, Schick is out. And so is Sven Bender. He got a serious month injury. Strain, a thigh strain. So he's out for about a month. So Ten Yedvai is going to have to keep his spot in the starting lineup, which is fine by me because he's playing well. But I'd, obviously, I'd prefer to have all my starting center backs healthy. But if only one of them will be injured, I can deal with that. Yedvai good enough. Dimirbai had a cold, so he's fine to play. It says injured, but it's just a cold. He's good to play. Bailly's a little bit injured from his last game. He's returning to fitness. He's just not fully matched, not fully fit. 
So he's not going to play. Or he's not going to start. Diaby gets the start. He might come in if I need him to, though. Other than that, it's our best lineup, I think. Baumgartlinger is going to get the start again over Aaron Geese. Aaron Geese just hasn't been good. Baumgartlinger has been fine since he's come in. And Fred and Bremen are up there in the league still. They're in the, I think they're in the Europe spots. So, or very close to it, if not. So, we're going to go with this. Sargent up top. He got a goal last game. So, we know he's got the ability. But it's not going to be easy. We're going to go attacking. We're going to go with our attack that seems to be working. I'll remember this time to put our wingers, match our wingers up on their midfielders. So we'll have that the entire game. But let's get into this. All right, I've set the man marking up. Now it's time to tell the team that the media have given them a lot of credit lately. So go out there and put on a worthy display. Finally, the media aren't on our backs. They're backing us up. So we need to take advantage of that and use that to help us spur us on to more good performances. It's not the best weather for football out there today. My players can adapt. Florian Kovelt is winning a lot of plaudits for what many perceive to be his overachievement with SV Werder Bremen this season. Would you agree that he's performing at an unexpectedly high level at the moment? I think it's fair to say that they're performing better than most expected them to. Ultimately, the results don't lie, though, and they have to be treated as a very good side at this point. You're obviously a little surprised by their current performance levels. Is there a danger of Florian Kovelt and his side finding your praise a little patronizing, though? I certainly hope not. It's certainly not how it was intended. Floyd has really earned my respect with his side's performances and will certainly be, won't be treating this match lightly. We've been in great form. Five wins, or four wins in our last five. Other ones to draw. No losses in our last five games. We've been in great form ever since we made the change. They've got a three-man midfield, so we definitely need our wingers to help out this match. And I'm having my attacking midfielder mar mark their central midfielder, their central central midfielder. So we're currently in fourth place behind Augsburg, Bayern Munich, and Leipzig. We've got Dortmund coming up who are right behind us. That's going to be a huge match. But Werder Bremen are in sixth place right now. So this is also a big match. They're on the same amount of points as Dortmund are. They're just behind them in goal difference. We've got a plus nine goal difference so far, which is not even close to what Augsburg and Bayern Munich have. Augsburg, I don't know what's going on with them, but they are not good enough to be that many points ahead and have that kind of goal difference. I don't know what's in the water there, but they're on something. I would definitely do some... Uh, some uh, testing there for illegal substances because that's just shouldn't be happening have another highlight here in the 32nd minute it's gonna be a throw into with us down the left hand side these short throw-ins seem to be going better we don't give the ball away nearly as much we don't create as many great chances as when we had oh my goodness enough about the throw-ins what a finish by karim Demirbay. he is so freaking good Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a finish. Is that on the volley? Clearance by Egestine and on the volley, Demirbay gets on the end of it and just wallops it into the top right corner. Who needs Havertz when you have Karim Demirbay? And that's going to be how the first half ends. It's going to be a 1-0 advantage to us. We've been the much better team. Nine shots, four on target. They have one shot. It was on target, but wasn't very good XG. Uh, I'm going to say... Don't get complacent out there. Baumgartlinger is aggressive, but that's better than nothing. And Demir is calm. I'm okay with aggressive defensive midfielders. That's kind of what their job is. As long as he doesn't get sent off, I'm fine. Right, so let's start this second half. Hopefully another good performance as we did have the first half. Hopefully it doesn't take another worldy like Demir had to have to get a goal. Hopefully we can score a little bit easier than that. But I'll take them however they come. If they're worldies, that's just even more entertaining. So we're going to have the ball here with Tapzoba. Or Center backs are very high up the pitch for me telling them to be on standard depth as Arias goes for goal, but he's never scoring that. I do like seeing our wing, or our wing backs get involved, though, and trying for those shots, though. Like, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you attempting those shots. They're not great, but it shows that you're playing with an attacking mindset, and that's just that's everything I've been hoping for from these wing backs. So, even if they don't pull it off, just the fact that they're willing to get into those areas and take those shots is. Good enough for me. As the one problem we have, I think, is that we're a little bit narrow. I think we might try to attack with a wider attack with a little bit more width. Because see, when we're in the final third here, even our wingers aren't getting that far wide. As Diaby goes for goal, he goes for the far post, but he can't quite sneak it in. But yeah, our wingers are playing so narrow that we just don't have any width at all. I was hoping just having the wingers there would be enough, and I'm pretty sure I'm telling them to play wider, aren't I? Go to the tactics. Yeah, they're, no, they're not told to play wider. Yeah, they are. Why is it not showing up on there? 
Oh, it must already be an instruction. It must be an automatic instruction. Yeah, stay wider is automatically on the winger, so they're automatically being told to stay wider. So I don't know why they're sitting so narrow. Maybe I need to play more width, and maybe that'll help widen them out a little bit and give us some more space in the middle, because we're clogging up the middle a little bit too much for my liking. Sergeant has not had a great game this far. The game's almost over, though. The game is gone in a flash. I wasn't even paying attention. The game went by so fast. Let's do, make our subs. Let's do all the subs now. Get all the fresh feet on. Uh, let's not bring on Bailly, because he's a little bit tired. Eros has played poorly, though, and is on a yellow. Let's bring in Visor. Bender's on a yellow and hasn't played amazingly. Let's bring on Vindel. Can we have to make another sub? I think if you make all your subs at one point, you can make, like, infinite subs. But if you make them, yeah. Oh, no, not quite. I've done this before. It seems like I can make more subs than... I guess that's right. Five subs. Okay. I, th I feel like before I've had times where I could make, like, six or seven subs. But this time they get it right. Maybe it was a bug earlier. I don't know. It was a while ago, but... I don't know if we even made the subs. They did come on. Wait, did they come on? Said some of... Said they made subs. But they're on... Okay, whatever. We absolutely dominated that game. We didn't get the many goals as I'd hope. We weren't... I mean, we created a lot of chances. 18 shots, 8 on target. We just weren't very clinical. And I feel like that comes down to Sargent not being great. Demirbai with an 8.4. An absolute wonderful day from Karim Demirbai. And a wonderful couple of games from Karim Demirbai. Uh, well done, lads. That was a good win for us. I'm very happy with that. It wasn't the best performance, but they're a team right up there with us. So to get a win is all I care about. How long do you think Bayer Leverkusen can stay un unbeaten? Can it really last? Uh, I think it's impossible to expect things to remain perfect for a long period of time. The demands of the game and the strength of other teams means we're likely to lose at some point, but that's no problem. Karim Dimmerby's goal, a well-struck volley into the top corner from 23 yards out, was one of the highlights of the match, wouldn't you agree? It was a fabulous strike and worth the entry fee alone for many supporters, I'm sure. Actually, no, it was one of the best efforts I've seen in a while. Yeah. One of the best things I've seen in a long time in this game. One of the best shots. That puts us three points clear of Dortmund, so it doesn't matter if we lose to Dortmund, we'll stay ahead of them as long as we don't lose any points anywhere before that game. Two points ahead of Wolfsburg in the Champions League spots. I think the minimum aim for this series is to fin finish in a Champions League spot, but the ultimate goal is to finish second. I think if I finish second in the league, that shows that the tactic is good. Anything else? It's so-so. I'm not totally solid on the tactic just yet. It seems like it's pretty good. It's done very well recently since I made the changes. But, I don't know. We're just not getting as many goals out of it as I'd hoped. But I think that's a lot of that's come down to the quality of our players. So, I don't know. Maybe I need to try this with, the, with a different team with a little bit more quality and see what the results look like. But, so much better than it was. If you want to see the tactic, this is all the instructions or all the roles. Inverted wingbacks on attack. Defensive midfielder slash deep line playmaker, depending on what you got. It doesn't matter the center back roles, really. Sweeper, sweeper keeper at uh, goalkeeper. It doesn't really matter if it's a normal goalkeeper or a sweeper keeper. I think Livakovic is just better as a sweeper, so that's why I have him there. Attacking midfielder on support. Two wingers on attack and an advanced forward. Attacking mindset. Overlaps. Work the ball into the box. Play out of defense. Low crosses, but that depends on who your strikers are as well. Slightly shorter, slightly lower. Play for set pieces, but that again depends on if you have a very good set piece taker like Karim Demirbay is. If you have someone of his quality, definitely play for set pieces. If you don't, I don't think there's a point of playing for set pieces. I think you're just wasting time in that in that time in that in that instance. Be more disciplined. It's true to fullback seems to have helped too. Get them a little bit more involved. Counter counter press. Force opposition outside. Standard defensive line. Much higher line of engagement. Extremely urgent, tighter marking, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and get stuck in. Tighter marking is another thing I've done relatively recently. I just noticed in the report that they said they were getting so much, the other teams were getting too many shots off inside our box. So I wanted just a little bit tighter marking just to stay closer to them, limiting their amount of shots they can get off. It seems to have helped. So I think with three center backs, you can afford to do that a little bit more than if you just have two, because two center backs, you can get a guy drawn out of position far too easily. But with three back there, you get a little bit more cover. So I think it works with three at the back. But in terms of next episode, what I'll be coming back for, uh, I might just play a lot and come back for the Feyenoord game. We have Feyenoord in the Europa League first knockout round. I think I'll come back for those two games. Hopefully things will go well in the Bundesliga. We don't have a whole lot of extremely difficult matches. Mines are 14th, Stuttgart are 13th, Freiburg are 12th. 
Leipzig's a tough match. Dortmund's a tough match. Wolfsburg's a tough match. Berlin should be comfortable. So we've got some tough matches. It's three in a row coming up soon. But after that, it gets a little bit easier. You have Darmstadt and the DFB Pokal. They're Bundesliga 2 team. So that's a little bit easier draw than we had last time. We had Wolfsburg. So yeah, I'll come back for Feyenoord. If you've made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials are also in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Aren't these videos so much more fun when we're playing well? Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time.